Igniting the Transform System, our child care resource and referral panel. We are really excited about this panel. This session is being moderated by our board member, Fanny Glover, who is also the Director of Equity and Inclusion at Early Care and Learning Council in New York. In light of all the changes in the past 17 months, what changes have you made to empower providers, parents, and immigrants? Tequila Welch, who is the program manager, Child Care Answers. I can speak to a little when you were talking about um, the languages. One of the things that we try to do, because we do um, have, we found lately that we've um, had populations that we did not know <laughs> that were um, coming to us for our services. So when we rebuilt our website, we did it in a way that if they click a button, it will translate for them. And we have so many languages that our website would just transform, um, transfer instantly instead of us trying to um, uh, do it all because we can't. You, I mean, there's so many you can't. And then we've been partnering with different organizations, even schools and finding students that would translate some of our stuff for us because we know these certain translation services are not free, but you have people who want to um, empower their people. And so they're willing to devote just some time. And we simply were just sending them a thank you letter. Thank you for translating this form. This family was really um, appreciative that they were able to get a referral in their home language. And so just something that simple has been been tremendous in our work and we're getting um, more and more volunteers to just um, because it's simple stuff that we're asking them to translate. So that's our way of allowing people to help us give back to the community as well. Absolutely. Thank you, Tequila. It's mm -hmm. about feeling valued. Mm -hmm. You know, that's empowerment. It's feeling valued. Yes. Thank you very much. As we refocus and reimagine our work, due to changing needs, right? Have you noticed um, like a need for new skill sets, you know? And um, how do you navigate that work using equitable lens? So definitely, as we looked and um, even pre pandemic, we looked and we were looking at our scope of work and how it was changing. We went from our focus being on quality, um, initially it was about helping providers improve their quality, um, to more focused on families and the needs of families and businesses knowing the importance of um, child care and providers, how to help them sustain. You know, uh, you can wake up tomorrow and decide that you want to open a child care business, but nothing was in place to show you how to actually um, run a business beyond just caring for children. You know, a lot of people go into childcare because they love children, but that doesn't show you how to um, sustain a business. So at the switch of that contract, we looked at our staff, everybody that was employed at our organization for the most part, 95% had a degree of some sort in early childhood education. But when we're looking at our scope of work and the things that we wanted to change, um, we could have just put everybody into a position, but was that gonna be the best fit for the organization and the work that we were doing moving forward? So it caused us to make some hard decisions, but go back to the drawing board to recreate job descriptions, look at the skills that we really needed. Um, we, we, wholeheartedly believe that early childhood educators are a fit for some of the work, but not for everything. I'm an early childhood educator. I didn't go to school to, um, for business. I don't have a business degree. So if I can bring somebody alongside to help with those skill set, that's what we did. So we went back and we hired people that had um, specialties in business or um, how to work with the legislation and things of that nature, um, how to pull data. We didn't have anybody previously that did data, but a lot of our work is driven by data. So we hired somebody in to do that work. And what we found that it made the work easier because um, we could teach them things about early childhood. So we could teach them the things that if we needed um, things done, we could teach them just a little enough about early childhood that they can fit it into the work. And we found that that worked best for us. And then we pulled people from corporate America into our world. And so they know how to talk 
to the organizations when it's time to reach out to businesses to say, hey, we're important. Do you know that your or the, the people working for you, if they don't have childcare, then they're not going to be productive. But we had to pull people in who knew how to talk their language and not just, oh, we love the children. And so that's what we found worked best for us. And so we feel like we're thriving as an organization because we put multiple people together into our world. Wow. I'm going, I'm going to um, ask um, a couple others to chime in, but before they do, I'm coming back to you, Tequila, to ask you right now, how did that settle in the organization? How emotionally, how did employees or staff um, respond to that shift? I think um, I think because of the way we did it, it it, it went over well because you had people who um, they looked at the work and it wasn't something that they wanted, so they moved to organizations to who still doing the quality part. I think we found people that are here that wanted the shift, they wanted to do things differently, and so I feel like it worked great for us because we had a new vision. And so we made sure that we kept people on board who wanted to be a, be a part of that new vision. And even some of the ones that are here from previous, their um, scope of work have changed, but they've been able to embrace it and look at it differently and still feel like they're making a difference in the work that they're doing. Oh, wow, that's wonderful. You were able to manage to help them keep the passion mm -hmm. of making a difference, which is huge. Here's a question. And I want all of you to think about this for a moment, okay? As we, um, we've all heard of the importance of pausing and celebrating small wins, okay? As you are leading through transformation and measuring change, because I know you know how important that is, what and how have you measured success? I think there's, different ways to measure success and I think you can look internally at your organization and what you're doing internally and then what you're what you're putting out and so for me when I look at the internal success um, again this work that we're doing is new so this is the first two years of this type of work because again our scope of work changed so we had people learning the job learning a new organization and um learning uh, to work with different people. So my success was every time my team felt like they accomplished something. And so every time they were able to come in and say, yay, they learned a new skill, because I think it goes beyond, you know, we all have goals we have to meet. We all have the, the checkpoints. But when we're able to get a testimonial from a parent or provider to say thank you for helping me do something especially if it's something that um, they're just learning to do themselves mm. and so to know that they're able that they're making a difference because of course during the pandemic many of us had goals that may not have been being met to the um, what we were used to you know because not as many providers were opening not as many were calling us for their services because everybody was um, doing the same things, trying to make ends meet, trying to find the, the grants and all that. So were they looking to um, come outright and improve their business practices? No, they're trying to just keep their doors open. And so every time that we were able to hear somebody say, thank you, or just you helped me along the way, for me, that was a successful moment for us. And so, um, were we able to meet many of our goals? Yes, but the more important was the testimonials that we received from the people who were telling us that we made a difference in the work that um, that they were doing. Absolutely, absolutely. What are you most hopeful for? And I think we kind of sort of started in that direction. As we work to ignite transformation in the childcare system, I'm gonna go off just a little, and um, and that's okay. That's, like you, Lacey, it. it may be people on here that may not want to hear this, but when we're thinking about the needs of our families, so when families are calling in and they're doing refer, they're asking us to help them find a child care. We're finding that some of their needs we're not able to meet because our system is not set up for that. So yes, we can show them where the um, local food banks and all those things are, but sometimes families are calling in because they're needing um, 
what we would call non-traditional care. So, you know, we had a family who, a mother who called, she was a single mom and needing to go for surgery. She needed respite care for two, I mean, for a weekend. There's no way for us to support that in our database. So how do we go beyond traditional childcare hours and think about some of those things that families are needing beyond the six to six or the, you know, the traditional childcare, if we're really thinking about meeting the community needs. So that's where um, I'm wanting us to look more into what we consider um, licensed childcare and how families choose for their children to be taken care of and how can we support more of that work so that we can still ensure no matter what type of environment is still a safe environment for those children. Yes, yes. Moving beyond the tradition, mm -hmm. moving beyond the traditional and the what was, any wisdom that you would like to share with the leaders in the field? I, I, I learned many years ago in law school, a phrase, lead, follow, or get out the way. And the reality <laughs> is that as a leader, sometimes you are called upon to lead, but sometimes it's okay to follow your team, to trust your team, and to let them uh, uh, take the, the, the reins. And sometimes you're not needed. And let not your ego get in the way, just get out the way and trust that the team got it, and trust that the parents understand, trust that the providers are, are able to. So lead, follow, or get out the way. That will be my advice. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I will add to um, what Ramon was said, because I was thinking of staying close enough to the work that you know what's happening. And so you, you will be able to know when to lead, follow, or get out the way if you're staying close enough to the people who are actually doing the work to know when you're needed and so i think a lot of times we um we come trying to tell people what they need because we feel like we have the book knowledge but sometimes we um need to be in that follow and so that we can really be the true um, leadership that's needed thank you for this wealth of knowledge and wisdom that you've shared and now i just want to say thank you for the honor and the privilege to facilitate this conversation. And I now yield the floor over to Dr. Lynette Fraga to close us out. Thank you, Fanny. I, I just have to say, oh, I am writing quickly. I think Michelle put in the chat, like, I'm so glad this is recorded because I can't write fast enough. Michelle, I am with you on that one. Me too. I have a pad of paper I am filling up with the wisdom not only of this amazing panel and an amazing moderator, Fanny, thank you so much for walking us through this, but also amazing um, comments in the chat as well. I am just overwhelmed with the possibilities that we have given the leaders in this field and the real um, dreaming that we are um, that we are doing in this moment to transform this system. I cannot tell you how many quotes I have written down, Ramon and Tequila and Wayne and Lacey, that I know that I am using your wisdom um, moving forward because it has been so fantastic. I can't say my appreciations enough, and I I am sure I speak on behalf of all of those that are participating. Um, thank you for your work. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your time and your leadership, uh, your contributions today and your contributions in the future. Um, Tequila, I just want to, I was literally standing up and clapping when you shared about how important it is to make those choices about whether we lead or follow that Ramon so wisely shared, but that we also have to make sure that if we're closest to the work, we'll know when that's necessary. And I thought that was just an amazing place for us to end this conversation today. Thank you all so very much. I am I am full, my, my heart is full and I, Kiami and Fanny both know I can't leave a session, even though we're not physically present without just giving huge shout outs to um, the amazingness of, of what's coming through the screen today. So thank you everyone for joining us.